let's talk about uh, companies then and let's talk about earnings. Uh, well, we have, uh, uh, you know, the, the management of Sriram Properties who is joining us on the show right now. We have the CMD, Murli Malayappan, who is uh, with us at the moment. Uh, Mr. Malayappan, well, good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, it's been a great quarter for you. It's also been a very strong year for you. Uh, my question really is that with the kind of momentum that we're seeing, where does FY25 lead to? What's in store going ahead? Good afternoon. Thank you for hosting me here today. We had a fantastic year uh, in the FY24. And uh, also, I'm extremely bullish about uh, what is uh, coming up for us. Now that next uh, few days, we'll be uh, ready with election results. And uh, markets are posing uh, quite a lot of positivity. And uh, next five years, we are extremely bullish what is going to happen for the economy in India, growth across the country, across various sectors, and so particularly in real estate. And Government of India has been emphasizing on Atmanirbhar. We expect uh, Atmanirbhar uh, to, to be given lots of uh, momentum in the next five years. Real estate is the only industry which covers Atmanirbhar 360 degree. And uh, Government of India is going to have a lot of trust on housing, is my view, and particularly on middle mid market housing. So we are here to capitalize this opportunity. As you have seen, uh, last year performance has been pretty good. And uh, with that, we are looking at FA25. With uh, guidance, we are looking at about 5.2 to 5.3 million square feet and about uh, 2,750 to 3,000 crores uh, uh, sales value. And uh, again, handover. We had a record handover of 3,000 units last year. We are looking at uh, going up by 10 to 15 percent for uh, this year. Overall, we are estimating about 25 percent CAGR across all the parameters for FI 25. But given the momentum, what is likely, we could uh, surpass the budget. Okay. All right. So uh, that's uh, what we can expect, Mr. Malayap. Uh, you know the uh, the. Understanding in the markets at the moment is that uh, while inventory levels across many markets in India are low at the moment when it comes to the real estate sector, going into the next two to three quarters, there is a likelihood that there will be a significant amount of larger supply in the many markets that you also operate in, Bangalore specifically as well. My question then is that what is your reading on ground at this moment? And I'd reckon that to a certain extent, uh, you know, you'd advise investors to look at a slightly longer term of uh, lo longer term, not necessarily just over the next three to four quarters. That said, can you tell us about, uh, you know, the, the potential supply that could potentially come through over the course of the next three quarters and uh, uh, what you're reading here is? The demand is continuing in a very, very robust way across the country. And the Indian real estate, you can map it easily. It's uh, starting from Bangalore, uh, Chennai, Hyderabad in south, and Pune, Bombay in the west, Kolkata in the east, and uh, NCR region in uh, northern region. Across all these markets, the demand is very, very strong. On the supply, I don't see a bigger supply because of the market consolidation. The market has gone through serious consolidation, particularly post Demon and uh, GST and RERA. And government has been doing a fantastic job in uh, making sure that they distinguish difference between men and boys. So I see a very regulated supply coming into the market whereas demand will continue to be much larger than supply, particularly in the mid-market and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, premium mid-market segment. Luxury, there is already a lot of supply. Also, there has been a good demand. On the other hand, affordable housing, the demand has been phenomenally good, whereas supply has come down drastically in the last 12 months' time. And uh, on the other hand, mid-market and premium segment, demand and supply has been going I mean, hand-to-hand, uh, uh, hand. and I expect demand to continue to be very robust, and supply will not be that big, but that's an opportunity for our nation like Shiram Properties to look at. So we are looking at, again, launching close to about nine projects during this year, FE25, across all the cities, uh, Pune 1 project and uh, Chennai 2 projects, rest in Bangalore, Kolkata, about uh, one project. So. We are lining up about nine projects 
adding to about 6 million square feet, uh, out of which we are looking at about 2.5 million square feet to sell for FA25. We are extremely bullish on mid-market segment. On the affordable housing segment, Government of India has to intervene, step in to address that. If we are not able to address in the FA25 from the government side, there will be an acute problem can come up in affordable housing is my worry. But government, I'm sure, is looking at it and uh, will step in to do some corrective steps on affordable housing. Uh, so, uh, if we can actually also talk about your operating profits in general, uh, you know, it does seem like uh, the bulk of the, you know, the profitability that's coming through is essentially driven by operating leverage and that, by that I mean that the, it's essentially the, the momentum in the, the growth in revenues that you're seeing is actually leading profitability. But when it comes to the margins, well, uh, uh, there has, uh, you know, overall been a little bit of, uh, well, a contraction here. Can you take us through the factors that have actually led to this and what we can expect going forward in FI25? Uh, if you look at the project level, profitability has been pretty good for us across uh, all the uh, projects. And uh, moving forward, we expect uh, this to go up. In fact, at the profitability level, our, uh, because I mean, uh, the, uh, we, we record this based on the uh, uh, registration happened and the construction competition method, uh, project competition method, we are expected to get a good margin. We look at you know, EBITDA margin stabilizing at about 23%, 20-23% comfortably, and PBD is about 8-10%, to so which is uh, one of the highest in the industry today, and we are likely to maintain the same momentum for the next uh, at least 2-3 to three years time. Um. So, and I just want your view on whether whether or not you are looking at markets beyond just Bangalore, of course, which this is your mainstay. Uh, what other markets are you looking to expand towards over the course of the next three to four years? Uh, maybe this year itself, we'll be looking at expanding into Bombay and Denoma region. Uh, that will be our uh, next focus. Uh, as you have seen last year, we worked hard on getting, uh, I mean, Pune market tracking. Pune, all the approvals in place, we are uh, about to launch this project in uh, Pune. We are waiting for the last leg of approval. So we should be launching uh, uh, hopefully by June or uh, before end of June, hopefully. Uh, Bombay is another market we are looking at uh, entry. Uh, currently, you know, I mean, uh, the demand is uh, good in all the cities. Of course, NCR, there is a good demand. We will not be looking at uh, entering NCR this year. But we'll be very, very opportunistic in looking at what is good for the enterprise and uh, take a view on that. But this year, certainly, we are looking at uh, uh, starting our operations in Bombay. Uh, so also your uh, you know presentation suggests that there's an improvement in realizations of as much as 12% on a year on year basis uh, going into the next few months in terms of sales uh, so what is the pricing environment that you foresee is there will there be a big change is there a likelihood that the pricing could be even better as compared to last year prices will continue to go up is my view particularly the segment where we are operating mid market and uh, premium mid market segment we expect the prices to go up, which I have been saying for the last three years, year on year, the growth. So we have been witnessing the same growth or slightly better than what I have been predicting. This is likely to continue. This is essentially happening because of two things. I mean, uh, the gap between demand and supply, particularly mid-market segment, demand seemed to be higher than the uh, uh, supply and the market consolidation. Because of that, only few developers have been able to sell. If you map Indian real estate, not more than 35 to 40 developers across the country catering to close to about 80% of the demand. And if you take every city, whether it's Bangalore or Chennai or Hyderabad or Pune or Bombay or NCR, 10 to 12 developers catering to the demand of about 80%. So, which means customers have reposed lots of pain in these uh, 10 to uh, 12 developers. Uh, which means they are not comfortable moving beyond these people. Hence, there is a big price momentum possibility is there. I expect the price appreciation to the momentum to continue. Particularly now, let's say, uh, we hope uh, government uh, uh, election results to be very positive and uh, there will be a lot of expectations from the new government. 
and with that momentum and uh, economic growth what is uh, uh, expected the prices will continue to go up for the next 12 months and is maybe so final question then, so can you just talk to us about uh, the debt levels that the company has at the moment, whether or not you're comfortable with these debt levels and uh, whether or not there are any plans with respect to structuring of this debt with respect to equity going forward? Debt, I mean, we are, I'm, not, I'm, not at, uh, I'm not comfortable. I'm very extremely comfortable. We are one of the lowest in the industry on debt equity ratio. Uh, compared to all other competition, we are one of the lowest. Hence, I mean, it is not a matter of concern for us, but as an organization, we would like to, I mean, uh, uh, keep very low debt. As an organization, we don't borrow money to buy lands. We always put our equity to buy lands because, I mean, land is a long-term investment. But as construction finance, we take working capital. The projects which are under construction today, all of the projects are likely to get completed in about uh, uh, 18 months to 30 months time, which means all these debts, will become zero. The current projects which are under construction today, the working capital exposure it will become zero. Of course, as and when we start new projects, the new project related debt, that working capital debt will come, but not uh, the equity what we'll be using for the land purchase. Hence, debt equity ratio, I'm not uh, having any discomfort. Having said that, 18, 24 months time, the current projects, whatever the debt, will come down to zero level. So we are making good progress. A ready to the show is in a very, very comfortable position. Okay, Mr. Malayapan, we leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us and taking us through the quarter gone by as well as what we can expect from the company. We look forward to uh, more such conversations.